Hey everyone, welcome back to Cutting's Profit. And again, this is Luis with part two. Thank you so much for everybody that sent us a message on at Bisbrosco in Instagram and on social media requesting the second part of the episode. It means a lot to us that you guys are listening all the way through. So again, on this part two, we are actually going on how can we execute what we talked about in the last episode, which is the publishing pyramid. So if you haven't heard that episode, it's about 20 minutes. Just go back, re-listen real quick, and then come back because here's where we put in practice the six stages. We actually go deep in all six stages, giving examples and tools and case studies. And there's some Q&A also towards the end of the session with people that sell low ticket items from $5 books to $18 books, all the way to higher ticket with coaching and different things. We also shared this example of our older brother who does not speak English and he was able to sell a coaching deal for a big company in Colombia for 200 people using this method of the pipeline platform. There was great feedback on the presentation. So this is the reason why we wanted to bring it to you here in the podcast. Make sure to stay till the end because there's a surprise. We talked about this in the intro of the last episode and here is where you cash it in. So make sure to stay till the end and let us know what you think. All the information is going to be right below in the description. The link is going to be right there. Again, listen to the thing. And if this helps you, go ahead and click that link. So go ahead and enjoy. We've got some hey, fresh new I'm Luis. And I'm Luis. You and you're listening before. to the Content One, is Profit two, Podcast. Three, Here's the second part of the thing that we didn't discover until two years after publishing, right? We're like publishing pyramid 24-7, 24-7. And then we started going into these companies and we, under, we start understanding that there's many pieces that have to fall into place, right? So it can be very complex or very simple, right? And this is how we got to the six-step blueprint. So word, word of warning. <laughs> At first, think about, think about the six pieces as these Lego pieces or puzzle pieces, but then you're going to fill in the blank. It can get very complex, but what we want to do is as you think about these things, I'm going to give you some options reduce it, think about your own capacity and reduce it to what, just one thing. And then I'm gonna give you an example of something that we can build uh, and something that we can start tomorrow, basically. So that way there's no excuses and we're gonna see all your videos tomorrow, okay, cool? Okay, so the first one, right, is we all go through this, right? The what, we, what do we talk about when everybody tells me, hey, Luis, how are you gonna publish 45, 40, 45 lives in 45 days? What did you talk about, right? So that's the first thing. It's like the research, uh, the information collection. Uh, these could be stories. We're going to dive into a second stories, data, X, Y, Z, right? Then the second part is like, okay, once we have that information, how do we actually create it? What's our vehicle of creation? For us at the time with Facebook Live, today is a podcast, right? What's that vehicle? For some people, it's Instagram Live interviews. For some others, is just Reels, right? What's that creation method that aligns with you? That comes from within. We try blogging. We tried dancing in front of cameras. We tried many, many things, but podcasting was the thing that really grabbed us and helped us move the thing forward, right? Can I ask you a question cool. about that one? Abs absolutely. So I do, like, I talk to all of these amazing women all about starting where their strengths are, right? Whether they're a really great writer, whether they're really great live, whether they're really great audio, like all those kinds of things. Do you encourage certain entrepreneurs um, to start pushing their comfort level um, based upon tactics of the day, if that makes sense. Clearly video is sort of crowned as king right now. What if um, maybe half of these women are like, I'm more like a writer. So I create best as a writer, but is there a bigger leverage with video? Great question. So yes to the bigger leverage with video, because if you do have the team and systems on the back end, you could transform that information into other outputs, right? So I could turn it into a blog, I could put it into a LinkedIn post, but again, we have to have the resources and capacity. So if we're starting, I would recommend, what is the least friction for you to create? Like if we go back to our story on like the Bruce and Bros podcast, the setup alone was taking us a whole hour because we didn't have an office. It was in my brother's bedroom. We had to, we finished the sessions that we were doing. We go set up, put the cameras, uh, it was like an hour. And then can we sustain that over a long period of time? No. That's why we recorded five episodes and that was it. So 
uh, try to identify like how, what's your best way to create. And by identifying that, you have to experiment a little bit, right? Do I feel comfortable sharing my message over in camera? Do I share comfortable sharing my message in a blog post, in Medium? Like, how do you actually create? Because guess what? Then today we have tools that you can grab that post and you can turn it into something else. Like there's amazing AI tools that will turn that into a video, right? It will turn that into a, a picture, a carousel. Uh, we can hire a VA to be like, hey, use this information to do X. But again, we have to have the resources. So, but to start, don't let, I'm not okay with video, be an excuse. Be like, find that medium that helps you move the thing forward. For us with video, my brother loves to research way ahead of time and then do it. I love to grab a story, share it, and then from that video, grab a ton of other information. So like we have creation methods that are very that's different. That's yeah. And so, but it won't stop us from executing, right? So that's what so I will, I will. I mean, you work with high level entrepreneurs and I would imagine, and I'm seeing some good, really good questions here in the chat. That's why I'm going to bring this to your attention is um, the biggest hurdle is often not the biggest hurdle, right? Um, uh, the biggest hurdle can feel like, and Aaron, you're feeling this, you're like, I don't have a team. Like I don't have a VA that I can hand this to, or do I have to go learn a whole other system or, or something like that? Like that's a real, a real fear. And I think bringing yeah. Luis in here, something that really like attracts me to your method is the fact that the biggest hurdle is actually just what he talked about is actually doing the thing right? It's actually telling the story, whether you're in your messy bun or whether you're just in your bedroom or whether whatever, that, that that's often a really, really big hurdle. And I would imagine, and I, I don't want to put words in your mouth, Luis, that, that once that hurdle is conquered, the other ones are actually way more just hands-on plug and play kind of thing. So is this often even with, you know, million dollar entrepreneurs that you work with, the biggest hurdle is just getting into a rhythm. Uh, absolutely freaking lovely, right we had um we'll share some some stories but we had a, a cmo and Aaron, i i'm not ignoring your your question i'll answer this thank you for for putting that out there but we had the cmo uh who was trying to create for 80 hours 80 hours a month he had 80 employees and he was going in with his phone and trying to record everybody in the office and sharing stories and there was like no structure to it and he was in charge of 90 people so when we came in and we started to consult with them uh, we we're like, Greg, <laughs> what are we doing here, man? Like, like how much revenue are you actually leaving on the table because you're worried about this thing on the, on the, alone in the creation process, we haven't even touched the other four categories. Right. And, uh, what we came up with was like, Hey, look, we just need you for four hours. Right. So again, reassessing what our resources or time, the thing, and he's like four hours a week gone. I'm like, no, no, man, four hours a month that's it like one hour a week that's all we need you for right because you can then create a system on the back end he did have the resources to invest right but if we do not if we're like one person team same thing like we do a time study and we're going to dive into this a little bit more specifically later but we got to understand what's the time that i have today to be able to create this six step thing right so and i'm going to share like a very specific low friction scenario and uh, my favorite hashtag is remove the friction, smooth operator, right? How do, we, how do we remove the friction for us to execute, right? So for us, it turned out to be a Facebook Live because we had a five-minute prep and then we had a 10-minute uh, creation process with distribution, right? That for us was our vehicle. For other people, it might be different. And we can brainstorm these ideas in the Q&A, but as a one-person show, what is the one platform? What is the one creation method that we're going to focus on to grab some traction, to grab some resources? right? And then reassign it to them. That's why we didn't launch the show three times a week. We did two 45 live seasons, we call them, before we even launched the show because we needed to get comfortable with sharing our message consistently and frequently, right? So um, there, there, there's ways that we can scale that further. Kristen, with your I'm faster. just watch, watch his examples and let's see if that solves some of your challenges of Kristen has a, a really great successful business and oh, I see. Okay. probably on a burnout phase right now where it's like, I, I'm told mm. I have to be everywhere. Stories, reels, YouTube, podcast, blog post, Pinterest. So I'm sure you're going to help us see where to leverage. Yes, absolutely. So Kristen, I, I got you. But yes, um, you don't have to be everywhere. I promise you. There's advantages and disadvantages. There. I promise you don't have to be. <laughs> so that's, that was our belief too. Um, okay, so the next step is the productions, right? So once we create it, it's like, okay, now I have my piece of content, whether that's written, whether that's a video, now we have to produce it, right? It has to be 
edit it. It has to be designed in Canva. It has to be like designed with my designer. Like what, what do we need to do to put it out there? That's pretty, right? So most people spend their time in these three phases and then they're like exhausted or they're like, Chris, I'm like, oh boy, I'm done. I don't want to even deal with this, right? And they're like, okay, well now we have to distribute that content. Holy crap, right? We have to like put it out to the world, right? We have to be like, what platforms do I actually put these on, right? Um, and this is like, this was our biggest hurdle when we started distributing the podcast because we immediately went from not resources to having resources and now having like 50 pieces of content a week and we're like, we're gonna be everywhere. And then we have to figure out the distribution. We're like, where does actually, where do they go? Are they relevant, right? Is it our format? So then we're exhausted and we're like, you know what? I'm not gonna create anymore, done, right? So. Keep in mind, distribution is one uh, element that, that, we, that we have to account for within your publishing pyramid. And then, okay, well, now how do we monetize this content that we're putting out there? You know, what is it? We're like, everybody's like, yeah, the golden question, right? So um, I know that we're B2B, B2C in here. So uh, we can start thinking like one too many. What's the relationships I can get to that can have many, many options for me to sell? We're going to dive into this in just a little bit, right? Uh, oh, I think it's there. Okay. And then, how do we actually manage this, right? Is it just me, operations, management? Um, is it my team? What software do I use? Ah, okay. So we're gonna dive into that, cool. So you can take a picture, screenshot this. Again, I can send this presentation once it's over, but you can go ahead and do it. Okay, so let's go nitty gritty. You guys ready? Okay, so here's where we see some options and we can start playing and building our Lego things together. I grew up, by the way, with like one Lego funny story. My wife grew up with like, 70,000 Legos. So I only had the same castle to build and then rebuild and then build. So now as an adult with adult money, I have like 30,000 Legos. And then my wife is like, what the heck, man? <laughs> so uh, this is how I imagine things as Lego pieces, right? Like, so we can build something that really cool, super basic or, you know, super elaborated. But again, think about your publishing pyramid as we move this forward. I challenge you guys to move to the, the more frictionless process. <laughs> my, my husband collects and builds Lego. Yeah. Oh, Lego room. Oh my God. Amber, you have to share a picture with me later. Okay. So almost 30% of full-time creators work more than 40 hours a week in content in 2021. This has probably increased. I'm pretty sure. Uh, so, uh, you know, if you're like in the 10 hour a week range, 20 hour a week range, you know, raise your hand. <laughs> so uh, it can be private or like you try that. And then it's like zero hours. A week. You're like, I'm done. I'm not actually going to do this. Right, close to 25% uh, spent 30 to 40 hours per week, while over 20% spent 20 to 30 hours a week. This is a ton of time that we could be putting into our businesses, right? Working on our businesses. And 97.5% uh, of YouTubers don't make enough to reach the US poverty line. This is crazy. No, thinking about like the kids today, all they wanna do is be YouTubers. And you're like, what the heck? I, wanna, I wanted to be a soccer player. I have better stats than YouTubers nowadays, right? Uh, but anyways, I think about now that we have a business, right? We don't only provide for ourselves, but we also have to service clients. We have to provide for our teams if we do have a team. So how do we actually crack this system down, right? So uh, I remember the goals. Go from not successful to successful strategy, have a documented system, have a system that works even with a small team or no team and helps you save a ton of time on make some mobile. Okay, so first stage, screenshot, because we're not gonna be talking about all of this today, but you can screenshot. The first thing is how do we actually grab the information that we're gonna, we're gonna share to the world? So you guys just did a story uh, workshop, right? There's stories all around us, right? That's, that's great at the same time, but there's some other tools as well that we can leverage. So we have Answer the Public, we have inputs like books, blogs, content. I consume a ton of podcasts, right? So I gather information from those. You guys, I, I'm 100% sure that you're subject matter experts in your respective field. So there's a lot of information in here that we can share, right? Uh, Notion AI, if you're familiar with Notion, is a product management tool. Now they have an AI inside of Notion, which is awesome. So you can be like, hey, tell me, what can I say about XYZ? And it will give you a ton of options and it will prime ideas, right? Google, get submission forms. If you do a podcast with interviews, all the episodes that you've created, we went through our inventory of podcasts and we're like, wow, I don't have to go research ever again. We can just go through these guests and these five points and it will give me five more episodes. So now we can just go back to our library, right? And audience questions. So uh, the one, one of our favorite ones is this thing called Fitly is a news aggregator. 
So basically what it does is you subscribe to, you put a website in there that you really like and content and basically puts it on a, on a list. And then you can just click there and read a little bit of it. And then you can create based off of that. So it's just, you don't have to surf the web. You don't have to lose time searching from different things and uh, go from there. So pick one of the, the ones that we said, write it down, be like, this is the one I think I'm going to be able to do. And then put it, leave it on your piece of paper. Any questions? I see a lot of this. Is it not big enough? Are we good? Thumbs up? Yeah, moving forward. Okay, cool. Uh, sweet. All right. Now, creation. How do you or your team best create, right? Same thing. We go back to that presentation. For us, it's a podcast or a video podcast. That's actually us, right? And then YouTube. Can it be YouTube? Can it be writing blogs, newsletters, collaborations, interviews, Facebook lives, stories? I decided that I wanted to be a published blogger like uh, three weeks ago. So now I have three, three articles on Medium. But guess what? They came out of my podcast episode. So I spoke. We used this famous tool called ChatGPT to help us craft uh, an outline. And now I'm published. So we can leverage tools like this to save a ton of time, right? Uh, but again, initially, if we're not there yet, think about what is your preferred method of creation. Do you in the mornings enjoy your coffee and sit down in a table and write? Perfect. Do writing, right? For me, video gives me a lot of energy. Uh, what is your high energy activity that you can leverage for creation? Pick one and commit for the next 30 days. Cool, thumbs up, awesome. So again, our thing, this is this is this stage actually. So we actually, you remember how I told you that our stage took about an hour to set up? Well, right now we just have the camera. This is the same camera that we record the podcast with and that's it, so we don't have time to do it. So. As you create, what are the things? What is the environment that makes it easy for you to create? You don't have to waste a ton of time trying to set up, right? If I try to write something downstairs where the living room that was taken over by the kids, it would never get done because I have to clean first and then sit down and, and do the thing. It's not going to happen. <laughs> so uh, on the production, right? We use a tool called Descript, which I'll show in a second. But when we did the Facebook Live, there was no production at all. What we said was going out. It made us very comfortable with our message. It's okay because it's a new feed style feed. So it would disappear over time. It just made us, uh, it helped us move things forward. Right now we have a system called M2M, which I would not dive into today, but it's how do we multi-purpose our podcast based on ideas, but you can just publish raw. You can, you, if you have a team, a team, but some tools here, are audition, vid.io. We first started using the service. It was something that was really helpful. It's like a video editor on Chrome. Descript, iMovie, Premiere, if you're writing, right? What are the tools that you can help you write? Jasper AI, if you want to do um, AI assistance and so on. Uh, pick one and move forward. For us, we obviously, we turn that podcast into all that. So we can do that. But again, that was after four years of doing a bunch of stuff and four seasons of 45 lives, <laughs> which was crazy. We failed like most of them. We stopped it because we got results, so then we had to like restart it. So it, it works, I promise, we'll go into that. Distribution, um, who gets to see what we produce? We have a rule. If we spend one hour creating and producing, we're gonna spend one hour distributing and putting that content out there. So with that in mind, if you spend 10 minutes creating, can we spend 10 minutes distributing, right? So based on your time study, what do you have available? One hour a day, perfect. 30 minutes for research, creation and production, 30 minutes for putting that content out there, sharing it with your email list, sharing it with your contacts. Like, how do we actually do this? So we have different options. We have organic, paid, one-to-one -one rule, virtual assistance. If we do uh, commit to your cadence, what's your commitment? Right? We go back to the publishing pyramid. Am I distributing this once a week? Am I distributing this uh, three times a week, every day? What is it? Commit to that for 30 days, right? Um, do I have partnerships that I can leverage? Do I have networks that I can leverage where I can send my one piece of content and then they spread it out. For us, HubSpot was a game changer, right? Because now we're plugged into their network. Our podcasts get distributed into the top podcasts in the, in the world. So now we get all this traffic coming in our way, right? So do we have some networks and connections and people that we can actually plug in into? Uh, it could be other accounts where you collaborate, right? If we're doing Instagram, we're going to get specific, right? Um, do we have high leverage relationships? Is it an email list? Is it a newsletter? Think about one too many. How can I share once and get too many people? Um, this is our show cadence. Uh, 
it's our podcast scheduler. So each card that you see there, each little color that you see there might make it a little bit bigger. Uh, it's a podcast episode that we do with somebody that also has probably referrals that probably can distribute our content somewhere else. So we're always looking for those opportunities, right? So same thing. This was the same thing when we were doing the Facebook lives. Who can I share it with? Who can I tag into? Who can I collaborate with? Who can I send it on the DM? Um, and then we go into monetization, which is everybody's favorite part of the presentation, right? How do we actually cash in, right? So my advice, number one advice is, what is the fastest path to cash? For us was connecting with the decision maker. That's the main reason we started the podcast. We were, we had 60 days. That's it. Game over. In 60, after COVID happened, 60 days, that's all the money we have for just me and my brother. We were like, bro, like, that's it. I'm going to have to go get a job again. I didn't want to get a job again. <laughs> so we started a podcast to connect with those people that are closest path to cash. And the, the goal was, yes, we're going to create content that serves an audience, which uh, the first is not going to be there. But that relationship, can it help me get referrals? Point me in the right direction to find opportunities, right? So I would recommend that 100%. Uh, can we transition to sales after our collaboration, right? Uh, we can dive into like, what are you guys selling? What are the things that we're doing? But for example, we had this guy called Tony, Tony Caggiano. He has an accessibility software that he was trying to sell to funnels. He was trying to get people that, are, that, are, that cannot access these websites traditionally uh, to be able to see this website. So he was selling individually. Well, he partnered with um, a website agency and he discovered that if they implemented that for each client, they were getting a $5,000 tax deduction. So everybody won, right? So one too many, like who is somebody that I can talk today that can provide many opportunities? Do we have a self-liquidating funnel, right? This requires a little bit more like skill on the back end, but how can we you know, make our marketing dollars last longer? Do we have campaigns with partners? Do we have an amazing offer? Degree Wellness is just a case study we can share at the end if we have time. But then is there sponsorships that we can collaborate with? Is there scholarships that we can provide? We have a lot of coaches that are there, right? Uh, perfect. This is can our I system. interrupt you, Luis? So sorry. So one, this is one of the elements that many of our alliances are stuck on is on the monetization portion. And I want you to notice that Luis is not doing, he's not doing the bro marketing thing of really hard selling. He is in a position where he can start conversations with, individuals, dozens of people, hundreds of people, and thousands of people repeatedly, right? So be understanding that a lot of that content is not just hard sell, hard sell, hard sell, put a link on every Instagram thing that you do, but he is, he is starting conversations. Why is he in here in the room? Because he invited me on his podcast, right? He's here um, not as a not as a favor or anything, but because I saw what he was doing, I saw its value and where it was a necessary space in this group. And that's kind of how that happened. And we didn't talk about that on the podcast, right? It was a conversation after where where just be a human, like being a human in understanding yeah. that marketing is so much more human um, than we give it credit for. And, and that has been such... The, the faster path, at least for Katie, and it sounds like for Luis as well, and for myself, of the monetization is talk to people, start. Yes, yeah, a hundred percent. Even with Katie, uh, my relationship with Katie, uh, we go. So our first online client was a guy named Josh Forty, right? And uh, I'm sure Sarah, you, you're familiar with him. And he was under Katie at the time. And I remember working with Josh. And he was sharing all the messages that Katie Richardson was sharing. And I'm like, oh man, one day, one day I'll get to work with her. This is, oh my gosh. And we, we put her on this like pedestal in a sense, right? And, uh, and a, a couple of years later, after executing on this, we had the gut to invite her into our podcast and we had a great conversation. And then after that podcast, we were like, hey, Katie, like, I don't know if this is for you, but we do X. Will you be open to having a conversation about it? Like, is there any opportunity where we can collaborate? And that turned into not only me being coached by her, but also into her believing in what we do and introducing us to amazing people like Sarah, for example, and then other opportunities, right? So when we build a platform, call it content, right? For us, it's a podcast, but it can be a collaboration on Instagram, for example, right? It could be like something. 
that content is going to be presented to an audience. And this is where a lot of people get caught. It's like, I want my content to be out in the eyes of so many people. But then guess what? We forget that we don't have resources maybe to invest and, and pay for, for faster access, or we don't have the time, or we don't have the system to be consistent and high frequency, right? Everything that, that we talked earlier. But we forget that the person that we're doing the collaboration with is the first member of that audience because they're there with you with the, with the conversation. They're listening to you share those stories as well. And we forget that that person can be a very strong relationship for opportunities. And that's where we're going to dive into it. That's how we were able to grow the podcast, not only at the audience level, because it helped us with the network, but it also allowed us to grow our network uh, with people and be like, now I can send an email where like, hey, Sarah or ex guest, we're looking for X. Do you know anybody? And they're going to be like, absolutely, Luis. Here it is. And uh, now we have 400 people that we developed a really cool relationship through our publishing platform. And I can, we can show you a way on how to do that with like just an Instagram live. It doesn't have to be a full blown podcast. It could be a collaboration uh, where we talk for like 10 minutes and then there's content that goes out. Content is like that, ex that amazing excuse that is also going to help you build an audience over time, authority, relevancy, and trust. But it's going to be that door that opens many opportunities for you, right? So I'm no, maybe I'm shifting thoughts and, you know, as you put them in there, then uh, I see distribution is where I get stuck. Then I'm not monetizing. And Amber, I probably, I'm, I'm going to answer a question where you can even monetize without distributing content, by the way. So I'm going to, I'm going to put it out there uh, right now. Uh, and then obviously, how do we manage all of this? For us, we use a software code Notion. Uh, we used Monday, Basecamp, but it's something where I can keep track of the things that I'm creating, right? Right, the stages, I'm like, this is topic I'm researching. This is topic I'm creating. This is topic I'm producing, right? This is topic I'm distributing. Like, what are those six spaces? Put it on a basic project management tool and you can do it. Um, do I have an operations manager? You know, if we don't, that's okay. We're our own operation manager. We want to reduce the friction in that process as well, right? Do I use a pipeline? For us, we use a social pipeline called Flowchat. Full disclosure, I am an affiliate, but it could be a Notion CRM. It could be a hotspot CRM, right? How do we keep track of the conversations that we're having? Sometimes we leave money on the table because we forget we're talking to somebody. <laughs> so how do we get to remember these conversations? Like what's the content I'm publishing? Who am I tagging? X, Y, Z. So pick one. And then it, do you, everybody has a project management tool maybe? Yeah? No? Yeah? Okay. We've used so many, but um, anyways, okay, cool. So that's our company hub and that's where we put all, all our stuff in, in Notion. So how can we execute? Again, six categories and each category we're gonna, sorry, we're gonna execute on the publishing pyramid. How many resources, how much time, right? If we don't have a team, how much time do I have to do research? How much time do I have to create? How much time do I have to produce? How much time do I have to distribute? And we go through all this. How do I actually manage that time, right? So. La Facebook live example. This is how we got to our first six figures. Everybody ready? Yeah? Go? Cool. Yeah? I see some sounds. Okay, cool. Are we awake? Ooh, ooh. So we put some music. I'm not plugged into a roadcaster, but it's all good. Uh, okay, so this is literally the, the flow that we did. We did a time study and we said, okay, we have 15 minutes a day. How do I actually do this, right? How can I be consistent? My commitment is one Facebook live per day. And the main goal, again, going back to the publishing pyramid that's down here, right, was to work on our messaging with high consistency, high frequency, right? So we're like, okay, my research is going to be story of the day. So I'm listening to podcasts. I'm educating myself. I have some knowledge. I need a story. Sometimes I, I share a story about my baby. I share a story about my huskies. And then I related it to my business. That's key, right? How do I relate the story I'm telling to my business, to the pain points that my audience and my people that might be listening to this are gonna relate. And then I'm gonna connect it. Hey, if you're interested, every, we did this personally, I think it's necessary, but every single video we provide a ton of value. like, hey, if this resonates, why don't you leave a comment right below? Hey, if this resonates, if you have a question, let me know, I'm happy to connect. And some people will write stuff, some people will not write stuff and that's okay, right? And then I'll record in my Facebook Live I did that for five minutes. I literally sat down, put a timer, wrote down, wrote down my story. And then in the next 10 minutes, I literally grabbed my phone and hit record. So then 
that is my creation, my production, and my distribution at the same time. So again, think about removing the friction. Facebook Lite allowed me to do that, right? We go back to your preferred method of creation. How do these categories apply to your preferred method of creation? For us, it was like that. And then how do we monetize? Well, here, this was the first, the, the, the beautiful thing, right? So for us, we're selling a service. So we're like looking to connect to people and have a conversation with them to see if they were actually a fit, if they were resonating for the content. For B2C, how I would do it is like, who is a relationship, right? That I can solve problems for that have many relationships, right? Because we know, we now know if we have a consumer product, right? There's a cost per lead, there's an acquisition cost, there's all these things, all these steps, right? If we, if we wanna follow, where do we sell it? There's many, many layers to like how we actually make money. But if I can establish a relationship with one person, that can give me access to many, probably that's a high leverage relationship and we can get to monetizing faster. So for us, at day 15, I was sharing a story, which was a polarizing story. And then I put my phone down at 11.50, 11.50 at night, which was my commitment to consistency. It's like, I cannot let midnight go through without me publishing this video. And at 11.55, this guy texted me, he's like, hey dude, we connected like a month ago over a different thing. I've been seeing your content on LinkedIn. Uh, I want to invite you to a content dinner, 11.55 PM. And I was like, what is a content dinner? And it's like, it's this thing where we come in and we talk and we record it. I'm like, shoot. So I showed up, I explained what I did. And that person was looking for the exact service that I was providing. And that led to an $80,000 deal that we did over the first like year. And then that was our case study to move things forward and go back. And it was like that one video that I, that I decided to shoot at 11, 15 night that triggered everything, right? So like, literally, I don't want to mimic Russell Brunson, but it's like, you're like one video away or you're like one piece of content away, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> but anyways, and then how do you, I manage the Facebook Live. I literally had a spreadsheet on Google Sheets. And I was like, today I talked about this and this is the results, right? This is how many conversations we established. Today I talked about this, how many conversations. So what we follow with our eyes, what we see, what we measure is what grows. And it was true. And we stopped because we had to fulfill and then we did it again. And then at day 17, that's when Josh came on. And then we're like, oh, we're not completing the 45 live. We have to do another one. And then we did it with like 100 people. And it was so fun. But again, remove the friction. How can I create consistency consistently? Any questions so far? No? Is resonating? Yes, thumbs up, sh thumbs down, half, yeah-ish. Okay, uh, platform example. So platform example, we call our podcast a platform because it's in many, in many, many platforms, I guess. But it's like our stage where we can connect with people. We've done multiple six figures. It landed a hotspot deal and different things. And we follow the same framework. So for research and collection, we're interview based. So it's literally an opt-in form. People send us the opt-in form and that's it. It's five minutes. We go through that data and Sarah can, can tell you because I was like, Sarah, you haven't submitted your opt -in, your submission form. I need your information so I can know what to talk about. So that was, uh, that was what, what we're doing. Now we have an interview is anywhere between 45 to 60 minutes. Now we built more capacity because we were able to hire people. So now we have 60 minutes, three times a week that we have blocked off just for this. So again, we go back to like, what is your time study per day? On the production, still minimum. We record live. That live recording is what goes out on the podcast platform. So if you listen to our show in any podcasting platform, we go through a live intro. Maybe there's light editing where we grab like a hook and we put it at the beginning, but that's it. We don't spend much time on this. And this is where a lot of people get like so hung up because they want like their content to be so perfect and juicy and oh my gosh, but that will stop frequency and consistency. So we decided our decision, our conscious decision was like, hey, we are going to invest in an equipment piece that's going to allow us to record high quality audio. And that's what goes up, right? Distribution, live video, the day that we record, audio podcast. That's how it started. That's it. It was literally an MP3 that I would grab and drag into Buspra, which was the platform that we used. And that was it. It took me five minutes. Today is a little bit more complicated because we have a team on it. But at the first time, we did close to 200 episodes like that. If there was a highly produced thing on the back end, it was not going to happen. And then monetization, we ask every single guest, hey, who's somebody that can come to the show? Hey, by the way, I don't know if this is for you, but can we show you a demo, right? So who, that person is like our first audience member. Can we provide an opportunity for them? Can we provide value to them? Can we have a chance to show you what we got, right? 
Maybe it's a demo. Maybe it's showing the product. Maybe it's like, hey, this product can save so many lives, can help so many people. Do you have the relationships? Can we go do this together, right? And then how we manage it is through our product management tool, which is the boring part, which is what I'm really good at on my side. My brother's a creative side. I'm like, put it on spreadsheet guy. Can you help us translate this into coaching? A hundred percent, even better. Okay, so um, obviously I'll send these out, but I think we're at the end. So how do we break it down, right? Resources, capacity, consistency, and skills. So Lori, can you help translate this into coaching? Is the monetization on the monetization side? It's very, very, very exciting. And, and I know that I have, uh, I've been that with that perfection issue, that perfection issue, like I'll spend hours just on a blog post, right? Hours and hours and hours like, okay, this is not gonna help me, you know, be um, getting messages out there every single day. Um, but I'm trying to look through and see how to carve out my week to make this happen and um, still okay. clients, right? Fit this into my funnel, fit this into everything. Okay, so what what are we? Let's do a quick case study, right? What are we selling? Are we you selling coaching? Selling coaching, mm -hmm. wellness. Selling wellness. Okay, is it group coaching or one on one coaching? Well, um, in my funnel, the one on one will be the top, right? But I but I want to start a group coaching because I don't want to work forty hours a week. I did that as a nurse practitioner, like been there, done that, right? I, okay. I want to have have my one on one at the top of the funnel, but create wellness programs and you know um, levels that they can opt into. Okay, cool. Okay, so let's go with one-on-one. Uh, -on -one is easy because you can connect with that one person that you really want to coach, right? right? And then have a conversation. Now, group coaching, a little bit different, but think about on wellness, who's one relationship that have access to your ideal coaching client. So I'll give you an example. We had uh, our older brother, he lives in Colombia and he's like, hey dude, I want to work with you guys. And I'm like, sweet, do you speak English? And he's like, no, I'm sorry. You cannot, you cannot work with us. But we're like, hey, why don't you go ahead and sell our services in, in South America, right? but he never published before. So we challenged him for a 45 live. We're like, you need to understand the pain of publishing because a lot of people are coming with us because that's their pain. We're like, man, I don't know how, what to say. I don't know how to create it, all these things, right? And then we help him with this. So he started his thing and then he's like, bro, like I really want to coach. Like he's worked in corporate all his life. I, I, I found my message, right? I'm pretty sure you know your message, you know your framework, you know your thing, right? So I'm like, perfect. So I'm like, all right, Mario, here's the deal. Start a podcast and bring people in and then present an opportunity to that person. For the first 40 episodes, and keep in mind, this is a, this is not a audio podcast. He called it podcast, but it was a Facebook Live from StreamYard, the free account. So you see the StreamYard at the top and that's it, right? So very low friction. He had like literally not, he didn't have $20 to go put in the Buzzsprout platform. That's what I did. So we're like, use this free tool to communicate with that person. He decided to record 40 episodes with very cool stories, like content that he thought it was going to resonate with the audience. Nothing triggered anything because there's no audience. And that's okay. That comes with time and consistency and frequency. The second, we're like, Mario, who's one person that you want to coach? And he's like, I want to coach CEOs and CFOs for their sales team. He ran very successful sales teams in, the, in, in Colombia. I'm like, perfect. Who makes the decision for you to coach a group of 200 people that are salesmen, right? And he's like, well... It could be the HR department, somebody, a director. So the next guest, we're like, you are not allowed to publish unless your next guest is a director of X company. He was able to invite that person in. They talk about their topic, which was family, leadership. He ran through his method during the interview. After the interview was over, he's like, let's call her Maria, right? Hey, Maria, I don't know if you know what I do, but this is exactly what I do with the groups and we can help you achieve X. And she goes like, what? That's your method? I have a group of 200 people that I would love for you to meet. But my company had a budget and it spent the budget. But I don't care. I'm going to introduce you to somebody else. She introduces to somebody else. And that somebody else ended up being a 5K deal, which in Colombia is like a five month <laughs> worth of billing expenses, right? And he ended up coaching 200 people. And that became his main product. So who's one relationship that we can bring to collaborate, right? whether that's like writing different things. So that's a very actionable process that we can do. So hopefully I, I saw the thumbs up. So hopefully it helped clarify a little bit. We can dive into later. Happy to hop on a call and help out. Um, thank you. Thank you for the question. Okay. So anyways, we go through all this, right? Ba, ba, ba. Um, by the way, before we, before we move forward, I think we're towards the end, right? 
Do we have any specific questions? Do we have time for questions, Sarah? I don't know. So far. I have time for questions. Okay, cool. Yeah, so they get to make the choice whether they're in or out. Yeah. And so much of what is happening here just in the chat is very much, how do I connect it? Because we have, we have product sellers, right? Um, some people are product sellers in here right now that sell guides. Mm -hmm. Some are coaches, um, some are leaders, some are finance, like many, many, many different things. And I think that this is the, the hurdle for businesses. And this is why we pay for connection, right? To, to help people help us fill yep. in the gaps and connect the dots. So that's a lot of what the questions are coming in. So we're kind of brainstorming that. Perfect. Okay. So after this whole spiel of information from one to 10, did it get better? Yes, no, put it in the comments. Like, so I'm like, okay, that's kind of like a roadmap. I can go back and look at my own system. Has it been positive? Be completely honest, right? Because if it's, it didn't work, I have to like rethink my whole career now. Um, but <laughs> yes, better. Okay. Luis, I'm going to take myself off mute. Is that okay? Absolutely. So Let's I go. feel more confident in that I'll waste my time less. <laughs> which is good. Um, but I did, I did put in the comments for Sarah that like stuff like this, you're talking about like, oh, and I make six figures, but then you talk about this client becomes an $80,000 client. And I was messaging Sarah, my clients are $5 clients. And okay. so I I'm curious, like with the people you've worked with, how do you help your people who have $5 clients, you sell them something, you make $5. How do you help them explode to get to six figures when they have to have so many clients to get to that. Absolutely. What, what do you sell? Um, I, I sell books and I have a paid podcast. Awesome. Okay. So you're like half, like way more than halfway there. So obviously for $5 products, right? In a sense, it's like, okay, are, are you the face of the company? Are you the attractive character? Are you, yeah. are you trying to be? Yeah. Okay. So we talk about this concept called art, authority, relevancy, and trust, right? And it's similar to, to sales, right? The, for a regular consumer, when we were in the fitness studios, you know, it took eight to 12 points of contact for somebody to reach back out to us. And this was like phone calls. It was cold calling. Like, hey, you know, you saw an ad or it was a lead that come through, right? Obviously, we're not going to spend that amount of time with a $5 product probably, right? Do, and, and again, I'm, I'm making assumptions because I don't know if you do have a back end or like if there's a back end even. But, um, or we have the capacity, but with a $5 product, one of the options that we had there was like a, uh, a funnel, right? So how can I invest $5 and get six back or $5 and get five back, right? And then what is the process? Is there a follow up process on the back end? Or if it's your one book, we had somebody that sold uh, children's books. So for her, it was all about distributing the children's books into major retailers or like, how can I actually get my book in front of many eyes? So you already have a publishing platform. How can you develop a relationship that can help you move that book forward, right? We, we're just helping. Um, I don't know if you guys are familiar with Amanda Holmes, but the, her dad was Chet Holmes. She wrote Ultimate Sales Machine. Wonderful book. I highly recommend it. And they just released the second edition, right? It is a $18 book, but we had a conversation and she had a weekly podcast that we were producing for her. And uh, she had a conversation with John Lee Dumas, who is like one of the top uh, podcasters, entrepreneurs on fire, right? And, and he goes and like, hey, Luis and Amanda, you guys should be doing a daily podcast. And she freaks out, right? She's like, what? Five interviews a week? What? Right? So in our heads, we have that. So for her, we're like, okay, how can we reframe this? And obviously, there's a whole method to the madness here. He said, like, your downloads are going to increase. Your frequency increases. Like, your consistency increases. People are going to consume your content way more, right? And keep in mind, her podcast is not huge, right? It's not a big podcast. We, for her time, was she was creating for an hour. And then we, one hour, we would record five five-minute episodes. So it was the same recording time. We just increased the frequency on the content that was going out. And her content was coming out of her book. So she didn't even have to think about what she was going to say. It was like, we read a quote, something like that. So again, she was a business book, right? And this originated uh, a spike in downloads in a sense, because people can listen more frequently, right? And then that translated into traffic, which translated into selling the book, which translated into developing relationships to go sell the book. So what she did was she would grab a relationship and be like, hey, to craft an offer for that one person, be like, hey, if you buy 200 of my books, 
I will go speak in your in your company. So they will buy 200 books and then she'll speak. So she boosts sales that way. And then her whole company knew the book and all these things. So again, you probably have a daily opportunity. Uh, and I know, I know you mentioned multiple platforms, so you might be familiar with multiple platforms, but it's like, depending on the topic, can you connect with one person a day that, that maybe that one person a day starts buying your book or know somebody that can connect you to a source that can sell many? The concept is the same. How do we connect with that one person? And again, there's other pieces that come after, you know, do we have the funnel in place? Do we sell it through Amazon? Like, what is that? And then are there other products on the back end that once I sell my $5 book, can it be a bump offer? Can it be like an upsell opportunity? Can it be a community on the back end? So there are many elements that we can play with, but it's like, how do we increase that offer? But initially it's like, go, we go back to fastest path to cash. What's that one relationship that can change everything, right? Um, so hopefully, hopefully that clarifies a little bit. That's probably the best I can do without diving deeper, but <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Thank you. All right. So, and, uh, we'll, we'll share some other stories and case studies as well. But again, I think, I feel like you guys are ready to start crushing it. Yeah. Maybe like one step, like we have our publishing pyramid worksheet. We're done. We know our messaging. What's the commitment. I would love to hear the commitment on publishing. Right, like is it five minutes a day, ten minutes a day? What are we creating? Are we writing? Are we creating video? Um, so here's my offer. So I did mention that there's gonna be an offer. Here's my offer. Uh, so we do have this pipeline platform program. So what we talked about on like how can we connect with these people while we create content because we are building authority, relevancy, and trust on the front end, right? To be able to create these things. So that pipeline platform is basically how do we build this whole system like we did. And I promise you, I promise you, promise you, it's uh, it's not hard. Uh, so it could be even from Instagram. So we have a, somebody that is doing that on Instagram live, basically, and that's it. That that's all they do, and uh, it's amazing. Every single day, they connect with somebody. So we have group sessions for the next three months. So we're actually going to be able to brainstorm, dive deep into how do we execute for this, whether it's you or no team. Awesome. We have the Slack group support for three or more months. Uh, we have all the Notion templates, or if you work in a different project management tool, we'll adapt those. We have adapted them to Basecamp, to Monday, to spreadsheets. So that way we can follow, we call it the podcast flow, but it will be your content flow. Like who are we connecting with? The hub and your CRM. Uh, how do we actually keep track of these conversations? Uh, there's going to be a membership area with obviously all the recordings and the resources that we're going to be putting in there. And there's a community and Slack support 24 seven. So we have me, my brother, there's a couple of project managers that are there with us that are also going to be helping answer every single question that you might have around the, the platform. If you guys are interested, uh, our commitment to you is you are actually going to have the results of opportunities in your pipeline to be able to generate this or we give you your money back, right, after three months. So I think it's a pretty fair exchange. We started this with a Facebook Live, guys. I think if my brother speaking Spanish in Colombia was able to do this, I think every single one of you can potentially build this to many six figures and above. And with the help of Sarah, who's going to be joining us as well, I think is, is a power match of this. So I'm going to leave the link in the, in the chat if you guys are interested today. And uh, if you're not, that's fine. You're not, you don't hurt my feelings. But I think... We're going to have a blast kind of building from there. But if you have any questions, um, an open book, we can share more case studies and examples on help you clarify a little bit what we're doing with this. This is our social media handles. Uh, and again, you go, you go to our social media handles and we don't have thousands and hundreds of thousands of followers, right? And that's the beautiful thing. You go, I can share my podcast numbers. I'm an open book. And with those numbers, people think it's like, oh, you need all these numbers. No, no, you don't. You need the right connections. You need the right conversations that can trigger that. So I'll be honored if you guys join us in this adventure. And if you want more details on the offer, we're happy to answer any questions. But I'm an open book if you want to go ahead and uh, continue with the conversation. Oh, I'm so glad Louise, cool. you have been in here. You're amazing. You're amazing. And there's been something so intriguing about um, working with Luis and learning about him and watching him. And I just find people that can really clearly shine a light on where I'm stuck are hugely valuable to me, right? That can really extract because I, it's so easy to just squirrel it, to just like 
you know, here are all the things I could be doing and should be doing. And, and I love how he introduced the big dogs at the beginning of like, everybody wants to be Alex right now in the marketing world. Even if you don't know who he is, everybody wants to be him right now. And nobody has the $500,000 to pay the content team. Right. And so it puts you into this method of less than and scarcity and like so many feelings that don't make you um, attractive to your audience anyway, right? We are really in the business of aliveness. We've talked a lot about this, of how can we live our lives so that we can be that attractive character and the proof of what we, we do sell and the, the life that we produce. And so I've just been really grateful to be able to go through this and say, well, I, I know where I get stuck, right? I, get, I can actually produce the content, but I don't distribute. I just kind of, well, it's where it is and then whatever. And then, you know, don't start conversations and stuff. And so um, I really believe bringing people into your world, it can be really effective when they, they, they can help you get places faster. So I'm personally excited to be in there. Um, this, is, this is a cool opportunity for you guys. This is not a JV or a joint partnership or anything. I don't get a dime if you join other than I get to hang out with you uh, for the next 60 days as we build this. I just believe in what he does and believe in the messages that you have. And we are back. How was that? Let me know in the comments. Let me know in social media. At Bees Rose Law. Send us a DM. Let us know. Is this helping you move the ball forward in your publishing? And for those wondering, where are you, Louise? We actually drove to Miami. Uh, we're recording in, in a hotel because we have an event with Coach Katie, the one from the episode. So we're going to be there tomorrow. You might be seeing some content coming your way. The offer, the offer stands, the offer is right below. If you want one and a half hours of our time where we brainstorm with you and we build your pipeline platform, click the link below. We jump on, we talk about your platform and we make sure that we have a roadmap so you can execute, right? So the link is right below. If you're interested, this is probably an offer that we're not going to make again at that price. So if you want to get momentum with your platform, if you're already publishing, if you're already having conversation with these people, go ahead, click the link below. And I promise you that we will help you move the ball forward. With that said, we'll see you in the next episode. Take care. Bye.